So have you ever had a miracle? Have you ever had something happen? You were like, whoa, no way. Um, years ago, I had an acting career. Actually, I should say more of an audition career than an acting career. But anyway, one of the jobs that I landed was an infomercial for a product called Doorlube. It was this product that you put in your engine and somehow it protected it from everything. And I was playing a cab driver, which I actually was at the time. I was driving, my car was a, a checker cab, and um, I was driving for a car service. So it was not really acting. But anyway, um, this infomercial ran in the middle of the night for years. And everybody saw it, even my grandmother, who I had no idea what the heck she was watching information information. <laughs> an infomercial about a car product, a woman that never drove a day in her life. Why in the middle of the night is she watching a half hour program about this product called Duralu? But anyway, everybody started. I would get recognized in the bank. I would get recognized in stores. I would do retreats and people come up to me like, you're the Duralu guy, right? Hey, does that stuff really work? Well, I want to tell you all about that. When I was 18, and I started my first youth group. There was a kid named Ray who would come. He came from a really uh, alcoholic father, crazy family dynamics. Uh, Ray found a home at our youth group and Ray came to everything. He would come to um, every retreat, uh, every meeting, every dance, every party, every trip, everything. Ray was always there. And when I moved out on my own, I saw that this was a kid who really just needed a, a positive environment, needed a change, and I invited him to move into uh, the house where I had, was renting. And it didn't work out very well. What I didn't realize is that Ray himself had a problem with addiction, alcohol and drugs. And I was very naive in those years. I didn't really see it, and then when I saw it, I didn't know really how to help him. It didn't work out well. He ended up stealing from me, he ended up crashing my van, uh, and then he disappeared, and I didn't see him for years and years and years and years and years. One day, 20 years later, I get a phone call from Ray. Turns out that he had drank and drugged for 20 years, and he hit the bottom. He hit that point where he's like, I can't do this anymore. I will not do this anymore. And he told me about one night in the middle of the night, he went into his kitchen and he got the biggest knife he had. And he was laying on the floor with the knife in his hand. And he was looking up at the sky and he's saying, God, if you want me to live, if this is not a good time to end it all for myself. Um, give me a sign. He's laying there and what pops up into his mind was his memories of our youth group and how he had had so much fun. He felt alive. He felt good. His life was worth living and it didn't make everything go away, but it was a pleasant enough memory that he felt to put the knife away. Okay, remembering me and all those memories of the youth group and at that time, uh, he wasn't going to kill himself anymore. Puts the knife away. And then as he's putting the knife away, he hears a voice. And he's like, I think I know that voice. Goes into his living room and what's playing but the Duralub infomercial. With my face right there. And if he has any doubts about all these years later, is this the Tony I was just thinking of? It's the part where it says Tony Belizzi, taxi driver. Well, for Ray, this is like Jesus right there in his life. And um, the very next day, he told me he checked into a rehab. He was calling me to tell me that what had happened to him and how he had rebuilt his life. So when people ask me, does Duralu work? I always say in, in mysterious ways. That's how God works in mysterious ways. I want to give you one more aspect to this story that's kind of miraculous. Um, years later, 
I'm doing a retreat at this church in Queens, and I'm telling this story as a way of inspiring people to believe that God can work through people's lives and situations and never to give up, and you never know how God is going to bless somebody. Um, the next thing I know, a woman stands up in the church. She's like, Ray is my son. And from that day on, he lived drug and alcohol free until he died. Too much, too much. There's way more going on than we can imagine. So I want to invite you, invite you to be open to the miraculous. When you pray, pray boldly. Know that God is working on so many more things than we even know about. And to just trust in that. And if you don't get the miracle you're praying for, keep your faith. Okay? But know that these kinds of things happen. Sometimes we don't tell people because we don't want to get labeled weirdo or whatever, or we get judged by people. Um, but miracles do happen. And our God is good all the time.